Hi everybody, my name is Virginia Hill and I work at the National Institutes of Health Clinical Center, um, part of the Department of Health and Human Services. And I'll just go ahead and wait one second while they get the slides up. Okay, excellent. So as I said, my name is Virginia Hill, and many of you guys might know the NIH, or the National Institutes of Health. We're a biomedical research agency, and we research today's problems in order to find tomorrow's cures. And many times, though, the science isn't always the hard part. Getting the message out can often be the hard part, actually communicating the research that we do to the public. So what good is research if it just sits in a database and no one uses it? or it's never translated into a language that the public can consume. So we have 27 institutes and centers, all devoted to different diseases and body parts, and they all have a different communications office. But today I'm gonna to give you just one example of how the National Institute on Drug Abuse is working with teens to engage them in health discussions. So bear with me for just a minute and imagine that you're back in high school. Think about all the angst that you had to go through, all, those, all that nervousness about grades, peer pressure on drugs, alcohol, sex. If you had questions about those things, who would you go to? Your parents? Your teachers? Well, in many cases, we hope the answer is yes, but in actuality, sometimes the answer is no. In many cases, kids will go to their peers for answers, and that might mean that they'll try drugs out of curiosity or experimentation or as the result of peer pressure. And so the National Institute on Drug Abuse has a question. How do we get scientifically accurate, research-based information out to teens so that they can make better decisions about what to do with their bodies? And so was born Drug Facts Chat Day. The Drug Facts Chat Day is an event that's held every year in the fall, and it's an online chat between teens and addiction scientists at the National Institute on Drug Abuse. Now, as a social worker by training, I firmly believe in the principle of meeting the client where they are. And in this case, it's a perfect example of doing that, meeting the kids in their high school and on their computers. So we developed a software program with the technical expertise of a contractor and the subject matter expertise of the scientists at NIDA to make this happen. Now I'm gonna show you a convoluted diagram, but don't get fooled, I'll try to explain it in easy terms. So how this works is that a child will submit a question through the system um, and it will go through an admin and then to a moderator. So say that her question is on methamphetamine. The moderator will then distribute that question to say team two who has a methamphetamine expert on that team. And a general question will go to a generalist. So say the question, what's the worst drug? Which we get a lot of that question. The expert then crafts an answer that's based in research, um, giving only scientifically accurate information. And then that answer goes to an editor. The editor might add a link um, for more information so the teen can continue to read up on that topic. Um, or check for jargon or technical terms that a teenager or a high school student might not quite understand. And from there, it's posted in the public chat room. And it looks like just that, a public chat room. All the approved answers and questions are displayed here. Now, I should note that one of the challenges with this event is that we get so many questions. In 2008, we had 14,000 questions submitted and only 1,300 got answered. Now, keep in mind, a lot of them were repeats and some were inappropriate, so we had to filter those out. But that's about a 100 to 1 ratio, and so that's something we're constantly monitoring as the demand for this event increases. From there, we take the transcript of the entire day and we mine that for information like any good scientist would. And so we look for trends from year to year. And here's a chart from 2007 from when the event started. And you can see all the different questions that kids are asking. So this tells us a couple things. What are they curious about? What do they not have enough information on? And what are some of the misperceptions about drugs um, in their schools? So one of the things I wanted to point out was that in 2009, in our most recent event, we saw a marked increase in questions about marijuana. One of the projected reasons for this is that there's a lot of coverage in the media right now on medical marijuana. So we got a lot of questions like, if it's safe for them, is it safe for me? Our inhalants questions have stayed pretty steady, but we've seen a lot of increase in questions on Sharpies. Um, and I find this something very interesting that we're keeping our eye on. So as you can tell, this type of information would be really useful to help us decide what research to do in the future, what educational or outreach campaigns do we need to do, and how can this help us better educate the teens um, in the future. 
So from here, it's only onward and upward. As I mentioned, the demand for this event is increasing and we have to limit registrations of schools. So in 2010, I'm excited to say that we've expanded this into a drug facts week of which chat day will be a part. And this is a partnership between the White House, the Departments of Education, Transportation, and Justice, and even a private partner in the MTV and also the Grammy Foundation. So this is very exciting. And check out the website below if you have any um, questions or want to find out more. And with that, I want to say thank you so much for your attention.